Today is a very special episode of the Massive Agent Podcast, episode 100. Unbelievable that it's been almost two years of straight podcast episodes, and I'm super thankful to you guys for listening. And so today on this week's show, I'm answering your questions. A bunch of you submitted questions through Instagram and through and through Messenger, and so I'm answering your questions, and I'm super stoked at the questions you, you asked. No matter who you are in the industry and where you're at, like what stage you're at in your business, you're going to learn something, and we're going to do something fun. We're going to have some fun at the end of the episode as well, but let's get into it. Episode 100, let's go. The Massive Agent Podcast. We lead generation tips and strategies to get you more leads and sell more homes. I love to buy houses. I like to sell houses. It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Wait a minute. The leads are weak. You are weak. I've had better. better. Oh, have I got your attention now? Here's your host, Dustin Brome. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode 100 of the Massive Agent Podcast. Uh, crazy, crazy crazy momentous occasion and, and I'm super stoked. Um, you know, I got to be honest, I'm I'm proud of myself for sticking with it for 100 straight episodes. How many people give up after a month or after, you know, eight episodes or 16? And so, you know, it's hard. It's been a very difficult thing. Now, you know, the, it's been easy in a lot of ways. Like the content I put out for me is easy, but staying consistent is never easy over almost two years because stuff comes up and I'm traveling and I have family commitments and you know I'm working on a bunch of different projects that that demand all of my time and so um, yeah I want to thank you guys for listening I am proud of myself for this and so you know a little a little pat on the back but I really say that to show you that if I can do this if I can stay consistent to do a hundred episodes of a podcast why can't you? Why can't you? And I'm not saying I'm busier than you. I have no idea. I, I have no idea. I just know I have a lot going on and I was able to make it work. Okay. I saw a quote on Instagram the other day that I loved. It was, uh, it, it just said, someone busier than you is working out. And it was, it was in relation to exercise, but the, I mean, translate that to business. You know, someone busier than you is doing it. Someone busier than you is putting out the, the content that you want to be putting out, but you're not. So I just want to show you it can be done if you make things a priority. That's all I've done. I've made this show a priority over the last 100 weeks, and here we are. So thank you guys for listening. If you're brand new to the show or old to the show, my name is Dustin Brome, your host. I am a real estate agent in Salt Lake City, Utah. I've been an agent for about nine years. I'm currently with EXP Realty. I'm the founder of um, Search Salt Lake. That's my local real estate company here. I host another podcast called Industry Connected. It comes out every Friday, and you can watch the videos for that uh, for that show over on the Industry Syndicate Facebook page. I'm a co-founder of the Industry Syndicate Network. We are Real Estate's media network, and this show, of course, is a proud founding member show of the Industry Syndicate. You can get the Industry Syndicate podcast app and community app. Well, they're not separate, the same thing. The Industry Syndicate mobile app on the App Store and Google Play right now for free. And if you're listening and you haven't done that yet, please do. Okay, It's it's totally free. You can discover a bunch of great new shows. And uh, you know, the first of the year is coming. We have a bunch of new shows that we're going to be launching for the Industry Syndicate, which is super exciting. Some of them are syndicate originals that you will only find through our mobile app. And a lot of exclusive content that you'll only find from, from all of our hosts in the app too. So go get it. Uh, before we jump into the Q&A, uh, which I'm super excited for, you guys asked such great questions. Before we jump into it, quick shout out to the sponsor of this episode and one of one of my partners within the industry. I'm super proud to partner with Easy Agent Pro and so, so glad and honored that they that they're sponsoring this episode. So they are they provide real estate and mortgage websites for real estate agents, and mortgage pros. So I've had a, an Easy Agent Pro website for over three years now. Way before I ever launched this show, way before I ever thought about asking them to to partner and sponsor, I was just a customer, a very satisfied customer who built my entire brand, my entire real estate business on my Easy Agent Pro website. It was home base. like That was my main pillar for my whole brand. And they gave me the tools to do it in a very affordable way for, for under $200 a month. And I don't mean $199.99. 
It's actually less than 200 bucks a month. And I don't believe there's any better value in the industry. Trust me, I've looked. There was a time where I thought the grass might be greener, and so I started looking, but it's not. Agents, loan officers, if you do not have a personal website yet, you need to. It's your online business card. It's social proof. It gives you instant legitimacy and credibility if someone Googles you and they find a legit, modern-looking and modern-performing website. Easy Agent Pro is the only website company I recommend. It's who I personally use and will personally use forever. Like I can't imagine not having an Easy Agent Pro website. They're doing something super special for Massive Agent listeners. So until the end of November 2019, so if you're listening to this, uh, between now and the end of 2019, uh, between now and the end of November 2019, you are, for listeners who use the discount code I'm about to give you, They waive the setup fee. So you have no setup fee. You get a $100 Visa gift card sent to you at at your third month. So once you've had your site for three months, they send you a $100 Visa gift card that you can spend on whatever the hell you want, which is awesome. You get the Pro Designer Package for free. That's that's an add-on service that you're getting for free. They help you build the site and customize it, and and it's more of a concierge setup service. Uh, Highly recommend that. And then you get their CRM, the new built-in CRM that's all part of the website into the back end. And so if you want everything all under one roof, fantastic. You get the CRM for free for 12 months, but you have to use the discount code Dustin at checkout. Go to Easy Agent Pro. uh, Go to their website. You can also do massiveagentpodcast.com slash EAP. Once you're on their site, just make sure that the discount code Dustin is applied at checkout and you will get all of those things, all of the things, super cool. So um, guys, get yourself a freaking website. A profile page on your brokerage's site is not sufficient. And believe it or not, in the eyes of the consumer, you will lose credibility. They don't see you as a true professional when you're showing up claiming that you're the, you're the best one to list their house and you're a great marketer, but you don't even have your own freaking website Come on, guys. It's time to walk the walk. It's time to walk the walk. So Easy Agent Pro, MassiveAgentPodcast.com slash EAP. Use discount code Dustin. All right, guys. It's Q&A time for episode 100. This is cool. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a little fun at the end, too. So whenever we have a guest on, I always ask rapid fire questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask myself the rapid fire questions at the end of the show today so you can see how I come down on some of those things. And, and then um, hopefully you've learned something today that can if it's not something tactical that you've learned, maybe it's mindset or perspective that helps you. Maybe it's a piece of your, like you're trying to figure out your strategy moving forward and you're just missing a piece. Hopefully we can fill in some of those blanks for you with these, with the, with the Q&A. Um, ultimately, I just want you to realize, okay, if, if nothing else, if you walk away from this show right now, if you turn it off right now, I want you to realize that if I, Dustin Brome, who is... In, in my opinion, I'm all over the place. Like I fly by the seat of my pants. I'm not nearly as well organized as you might think. I, I just do shit and I just keep doing it and prioritize as best I can and I just keep going. That's it. If I, Dustin Brome, can do 100 episodes of a podcast, you can do 50 episodes of a podcast. You could do 100. You could do 200. You could do a video show. You could post on social media every day. Whatever it is, you just have to make it enough of a priority. So anyways, let's jump into the Q&A. Um, the first question, let me switch over here to my, my list here. First question is from Jared Takushi, or Takashi, sorry, Jared. Uh, Jared Takashi in Denver, Colorado. He's an agent in Denver. He asks, what are your strategies on posting to Instagram and pushing them to Facebook? Do you create specific content? Uh, I could answer that in a few different ways, Jared. So I am not a fan of posting something to Instagram and then having it automatically post to Facebook as well. That's lazy. I do not believe that that's better than nothing. Now, I'm specifically referring to feed posts. Okay, If you post on Instagram uh, to your grid, to your feed, and then having it do a Facebook post, I don't like that. That's, That's lazy. And if you're using hashtags, which you should, then all the hashtags get posted to the Facebook post and it looks ridiculous. Guys, people know People know that you did the same content on Instagram and Facebook. The caveat to that is stories. I do not have a problem with doing, when you do stories, having it automatically go to your your Facebook business page story as well. I do that because stories are a different story. Uh, you need a face, your Instagram profile needs to be a business profile 
and then you can set up the link to your Facebook business page. So whenever you do an Instagram story, boom, it shares it over to your Facebook page story as well. I don't have a problem with that. I do that um, because stories are different than feed posts. They, they perform differently. The expectations of the viewer are different. They're, they're much more laid back and, and some people consume it on Facebook and not on Instagram or vice versa. So that I don't have a problem with. Um, the, I guess the, the broader answer to your question. Um, yeah, I do, I do create specific content for Instagram and Facebook. Sometimes I will post the same things, maybe the same video, the same graphic or something, but I won't just, it won't be the exact same thing because if you haven't noticed Facebook, the language and culture and everything of the newsfeed, like the, the way what people expect when they're scrolling through Facebook is different than what they expect from Instagram. The behavior is different. It works slightly differently. They're not the same platforms. So the content should not be exactly the same. I'm not saying you shouldn't repurpose the same video or the same graphic or, or even the same idea for a post. You just do it in a slightly different way that's more native to whichever platform. So for example, on Instagram, if I did a, one of those square videos with the scrolling progress bar at the bottom, and I do that video, I will share it on Instagram. I don't go post it on Facebook immediately. I might, you know, go post a video that I did on Instagram four days ago, and then I'll put that on Facebook today. I'll take, usually I'll copy the, like the caption for the video I do on Instagram. I'll paste it into Facebook, but I'll change it. I'll delete all the hashtags. I'll change it a bit so that the message is still the same. It's just said in a different way so that if somebody does see it, on both platforms, they're still going to pick up something differently, even though the the content itself, like the video, uh, the creative is the same. So just that's kind of how I do it. I don't, but here's the thing. I don't overthink it either. I just know don't post the exact same thing on each platform at the same time. Okay. Don't be lazy and, and have buffer hoot suite posted everywhere with the exact same verbiage. That's lazy. Consumers know that's lazy. All right. Five years ago, it's a different story. People now know people are savvy with social media and they know what you're doing. So try to make it different. Okay. You can have the same concepts, the same creative and everything. Just post it slightly differently, present it differently on each platform. That goes for LinkedIn and Twitter as well. Use the same stuff. Absolutely. Just, just don't copy paste. Don't be lazy with it. If you're intentional and you understand the, the small differences and nuances between each platform, you're going to be fine. Um, that's how I do it. So Jared, great question. Danny Fee in, in Las Vegas, host of the Social Agent Secrets podcast. Danny Fee, a good friend, great guy, great agent. He asks, what's the one thing that I did mentally to get yourself to 100 episodes? Thank you, Danny. Uh, I kind of alluded to that already. I made a decision. I made a conscious decision that I was just going to do one episode per week forever. And and I didn't really think forever because that can get overwhelming. You're like, oh my God, I have to do, I have to do this every week for the rest of my life. That can overwhelm you. So I didn't even go that far. I just said, I'm going to do an episode every week and I'm just going to keep going. I didn't put forever or into perpetuity or infinity on it. I didn't put an end or even a descriptor whatever that's called, a descriptive term. You know what's funny? Like I've always hated English class. I have no idea what an adjective or a verb or an adverb or any of that shit is. I know what a noun is. I don't know what any other other stuff is. I think I know how to speak and talk uh, and write fairly well. So whatever. Anyways, that was it, Danny. Like seriously, man, I just decided I'm going to do, a, I'm going to just do an episode every single week and I'm going to keep doing it. That's it. When you make it a priority, for me, the way I'm wired, I now uh, make sure that no matter what's, excuse me, I make sure that no matter what's going on in my life, I make sure it gets done. So I try to record the show on Monday, but like to, right now today, I'm recording this on Wednesday and the show comes out Thursday morning because I was traveling Monday, Tuesday. I don't like to bring my Blue Yeti mic and, and stuff and record uh, outside my, my office. I just don't like to. So I just, I realized, okay, I'm going to get a bunch of other stuff done Monday, Tuesday, I'll record it Wednesday, do a quick edit, get it published. I can do that. I just plan ahead and I make it enough of a priority to just freaking do it. 
And before you know it, if you just make you don't worry about getting to 100 episodes. Okay, That wasn't really the goal and I wasn't really thinking of that. It was just the goal is an episode every week consistently. This doesn't have to be for podcasting. This could be if you're writing blog posts, if you're posting on LinkedIn, it could be recording a video, whatever. Just make the make the repetition the goal. Okay. Make the the consistency the goal. And pretty soon, the like episode one hundred or two hundred or five hundred, that works itself out. I'm almost on episode five hundred of the Massive Agent Minute or Flash Briefing. And we're we're like four eighty or something every day, seven days a week. And guys, you can now actually get our flash briefing as a podcast. So yes, it's still available on the Alexa platform, but uh, the Massive Agent Minute can be found on Apple Podcasts as well. So go do that. I did that because then the episode doesn't expire. And if you miss it that day, it's gone forever. I wanted their, I wanted them to just stay saved. So you can go back and listen to old episodes and I still have to upload like the first 300 episodes, but uh, ep- like episode 300 to almost 500 is up there. I think even more than that. I think episode 200 to 480, whatever I'm at is up there. So anyways, I didn't set out saying I'm going to do 500 episodes of this. It was just, I'm going to do this with the flash briefing every day. I'm going to do my podcast every week. Dude, make it a priority guys. It's, it's, it's simple. It really is simple. It, it's not necessarily easy, but it's simple. You, you decide that you're going to do something. You make it high enough. You make it a, a top priority, and then you just do it. You plan ahead a little bit with your schedule and make it happen. Simple as that. And Danny, you're on your way, my friend, because you're doing weekly episodes of your podcast. So just keep going, and pretty soon you're going to be doing episode 100. All right, Natalie Marchant in Chicago asks, why don't you just focus on selling more homes? Why all these other projects? Okay. This is a fantastic question. I get asked this quite a bit and it's, it's good for me to remind myself why I'm working on all these other things as well. So Natalie, I, this could be a very long answer. I'll try to be as concise as possible for me. I decided that, that, so the first off I, I realized what's important to me. What do I want to happen? I want income that is reliable. I want income that repeats. I want income that comes in over and over and over for work that I have done in the past. If you are just a solo real estate agent and your sole income, your sole revenue comes from selling homes, from commissions, from transactions, or if you're a a solo loan officer, you only get paid when you close a loan. It's a hamster wheel. Okay. You can make a great living. Do not get me wrong. Don't freaking at me, please. Don't get me wrong. You can make a great living for a long time. And a lot of people do. I mean, you can make millions per year. Yes. But what happens if you stop doing those actions? What happens if you get in a car wreck and and you're paralyzed? What happens if you get burned out? What happens if you get sick or a family member gets sick or you need to move? Like maybe something happens and you have to move to a different market where you don't have any contacts. Then what? If you don't have any business, if you don't have a true business, then you, you own your own job. So that is a foundational thing that's important to me. Natalie, I, I, love, I love this question because it, it's so, you're like, why don't you just focus on selling homes? That's why, okay, that, because when you sell a home, you, once you sell a home and you, and you close it, you have to go right back to the beginning and start all, start all over again with somebody new, with a new client and do it all over again and do it all over again. And without you personally in the business doing it, you don't have a business. You have your own job. That doesn't interest me. Okay. I wanted to create a safety net. I want to build financial independence. I want to build wealth. I want to build stability. I want to have residual recurring repeating income. That is, that's the main reason why I chose eXp Realty for my brokerage almost what, a year and a half or so ago. That's why I'm with eXp Realty is because that aligns with what's foundationally important to me. And, and so building businesses, working on other projects that can create income that isn't tied to a transaction or, you know, trading hours for time, that's important to me. Uh, it's, it creates great peace of mind when you know, if, if you go out and show homes or not, you're still, you still have a certain amount of money coming in each month. 
Okay, whether you're you're selling homes or showing homes or taking appointments or making your calls or whatever to still have income that that repeats, that is powerful stuff. That's how you build wealth. So that's what I'm after. That's what I'm after, Natalie. I believe that any agent who is not at least working towards having a business is they are they're really putting themselves and their livelihood and their families in jeopardy. Okay. Stuff happens all the time to people. We, we see it in our newsfeed among our friends, among our family, stuff that happens that disrupts their life. Sometimes those, those disruptions in life prevent you from doing work. I'm not interested in letting that happen to me or my family. I have two kids. I have a wife. I love them so freaking much that the thought of all of a sudden me like income just disappearing if I stopped doing certain activities that scares me and it's not acceptable to me. It's again, it's a personal thing, but I do believe every agent, every loan officer needs to start thinking this way because what happens if you can't keep doing what you're doing? Does your income repeat? Does it keep coming? Or do you have to keep starting over at the beginning and selling another home and selling another home? Okay. If, if that's what you're, if your whole livelihood and your family relies on income that can be disrupted like that, I, I would challenge you to, to really think about how to change that. So I'm working on other businesses. I'm working on other, you know, EXP Realty, the brokerage I chose. Um, I, I do in some investing here or there. I have uh, other streams of income. So if, if I lose any one stream of income, I have others. Okay. So, so that, that's why. And I mean, I'll be a little honest too, even though I think I'm a pretty decent realtor, I think I'm an even better entrepreneur and I enjoy business more than the, the, the day-to-day of being an agent. It, what I'm doing right now makes me happy and doing this podcast, talking to you, um, meeting with the clients that I coach and our massive agent society members and just like getting DMS and, and messages from, from you guys that listen, who ask a question or have feedback on something that I taught you through an episode or, or whatever. You have no idea what an impact that makes on me. Like that makes me so legitimately happy that I want to do more of that. So all the projects I'm working on, all the, all the, the business ventures I'm working on are all moving towards helping more agents and loan officers, giving them more tools, more support, more guidance, more focus to, so that they can have better lives so that they can make a better living. Um, while at the same time that can help me make a better, more recurring residual repeating income as well. So I love what I'm doing right now. I, it, it just makes me happy. I know a lot of you guys love sitting down with the client for the first time and making offers and showing homes. I respect that's, that's awesome. And and it's not that I don't like that. I just don't like it as much as what I'm doing now. And I feel like I have some things that I can teach the industry and, and I have, God, this this, this freaking sounds pompous and arrogant. I, I hope you know, I don't mean it this way, but I know because look, if you're listening to my podcast right now, I mean, it's self-evident that I have some ability to help people, right? That people are listening to what I'm saying and you may be laughing at it when you hear it or, or you may be like, well, this guy's full of shit. That's fine. But, but some people are listening for guidance and help. So I have, it's self-evident. I have some ability to help people that, that I'm, I don't take that lightly and I want to help as many people as I can, as cliche as that sounds. And I, I, I even hate the way that sounds. I hate the way that's, I just want to help more people. I'm cynical too. <laughs> I am. But until you've been in someone's shoes where they can make a living by helping somebody else to make a better living, you just don't get it. That's where I'm at now. And that's what I'm building, building on is I'm able to make a living doing something I love, which is helping other agents and loan officers to make a great living. That's what's important to me above setting up showings and driving clients around town and making offers. That's my personal path. So great question, Natalie. And you guys might disagree with that. You might think I'm crazy. Cool. 
But uh, and to clarify, I am still selling homes. All right, I I do still take take clients. It's certainly a lot less than when I was doing it 100% full time for sure. Um, but whenever I feel like a client might be better served with um, with a different listing agent in a different part of town or with another buyer's agent that can give them more time than I can, I refer it out. I refer out my deals, and it's yes, I make I make a little bit less money. But I can stay focused on what I'm building. I can stay focused on my goals. I can stay focused on what's important to me. And I can give them better service than I can provide. Okay, They don't deserve a distracted agent who's working on other projects. Uh, they need someone who can devote 100% of their time to them when they need it. So that's kind of how I do it. I will always be involved as an agent in some capacity. Okay, More like a, a team leader or rainmaker type, type thing. It's just Internally, we have a different structure where I refer it out. Um, so there we go. L- long answer, but I hope that brings some context and, and hopefully gets you guys thinking a little bit about the direction of where you're going. If, if you feel like you're on the hamster wheel, I know because I felt like I was on the hamster wheel. That's why I made changes. That's why I'm doing the things I'm doing. So if you have any questions or want me to help with any of that stuff or you just want to bounce some ideas off me or you want some clarification or whatever – shoot me a message on Instagram. Okay. I'm happy to help. I'm I'm, I'm happy to help share my experience and give my two cents. If if you think it'd be helpful, I'm happy to do it. All right. Um, so this is, this is a garbage question from George Wanaka. Absolutely. (laughs) Just kidding. George in Staten Island, New York. Um, George is one of my good friends. We we met on Snapchat years ago. So he asks, when is the next REMM retreat? So REMM stands for Real Estate Marketing Mastermind. If you if you don't know, um, this is this is a few years old. So we did a real estate marketing mastermind called REM REMM in Park City, Utah, and it was over two years ago now, two or three years, yeah, over two years, um, two years ago October, and we had thirty. 30 something people. George was one of them that came in and we just, we talked marketing stuff. We, we did some tactical stuff and we just talked and masterminded. It was incredibly powerful. It was super fun. I learned a lot. Everyone there learned a lot. Um, relationships were built and formed and strengthened. It was just an incredible experience. And George, I like the, the REM mastermind as we did it, that was special for that one year. I cannot see something like that happening again, even though Neil Mathweg's Agent Rise Summit a few weeks ago or a month or so ago in, in Madison came close, like great dynamic there. It was small. It was intimate. Um, but there will be events. Okay, I'm working on some events, some ideas for events, Okay, no, nothing concrete, but events that you guys can join in and come to and we can all talk and learn from each other and – and, and and meet one-on-one and all that stuff. So stay tuned for that, George. I think that's like the eighth time you've asked the question, so I thought I'd give you a little shout on uh, on the show here. All right, another very serious question from Sue, P- Sue Pinky Benson in Naples, Florida. Why don't you wear pink, she asks. Pinky, how do you know that I don't? Maybe you just can't see it. Yeah, I'll leave it at that, as creepy as that is. <clears throat> okay, so Emmett Dempsey, Port St. Lucie, Florida, asks... Emmett, this is a fantastic question too. For Zillow Premier Agents, even though Zillow has clearly said that they intend to replace you, the realtor, with Zillow offers and become the buyer, seller, lender, realtor, title, etc., why do you still fund them? Okay, Emmett's a, Emmett is a lender asking us agents, why the hell are we as agents funding Zillow? Why do we still pay Zillow knowing what their intentions are? Amazing question. Okay, I will give my opinion on this because it's nothing but my opinion. Like, it, sure, it's based on fact and stuff, but here's my opinion. So, I do not pay Zillow. I understand those who do. I do think those that do are short-sighted, and and they are. I mean, obviously, there, there's the issue of funding your direct competition. Mm-hmm. So there's that. But let's push that aside. Agents and teams that are paying Zillow for leads, they're doing it because they get leads. They're doing it because they get something out of it right now. So you can't – let's stop hating on agents who are just doing what they feel is best at the time for them. Okay? I I get it. Uh, Back when – like the first couple years I was in the business, I did – 
uh, with the team I was on, we did Trulia leads back when Trulia was a thing before Zillow bought them. And we did that. You know, the thought was we pay a certain amount. It spits out a certain number of leads. We're going to close a certain amount from that. Is it a positive ROI or not? Okay. So you can't fault another agent for doing that. It make it makes sense. It does. I mean, if you take us, if you zoom out and take a step back, maybe it doesn't make so much sense when you consider other, other variables and other, other considerations, but an agent's just trying to get more leads in the door. Uh, so they feel like they're, um, they're good leads and they feel like if they spend a thousand dollars a month, they will make on average more than a thousand dollars a month. Okay. So that makes sense. What, I mean, aside from funding your competition, which <laughs> everyone is, you know, everyone who's paying Zillow, they're literally funding their competition in a way for sure. Beyond that, I think that agents are not realizing that there's a, a higher and better use of those investment dollars. Okay. And, and a certain level of it is I don't want to have to learn how to do stuff on my own. I don't want a learning curve. I need leads now. I'll pay Zillow to just deliver them to my inbox. Just, just, I want the leads to land in my lap. I understand that thinking. Okay. And you don't criticize other agents for that. I just feel like there's a much better way with Zillow leads. When you're paying Zillow, you're not getting any branding. Okay. You're spending a lot of money. And what happens is you're showing up uh, with a few other agents on a listing. Okay. So if you don't have hundreds of reviews, you're going to look less credible than another fellow premier agent who does have hundreds of reviews. Okay. The consumer is naturally because of social proof, they're going to lean towards, towards the, the one with 500 reviews or hundred and 112 reviews or whatever. And if you have 16 reviews, you just don't look as credible, but at least you have a shot. At least you're, you have a seat at that table, but what happens, they're not, they're only seeing your name. They're not seeing your brand not seeing your logo, uh, unless they click on your profile and go down that rabbit hole and go to your website and all that stuff, there's no branding. So if you're spending $500 a month on Zillow, what if you spent $500 a month on Facebook ads or Google ads? I'm going to run with Facebook ads because they're a much better value and they're much easier for the average agent to learn how to do themselves. If you spend $500 a month on Facebook ads, let's say you're getting let's say it's like a hundred or $200 a lead, like, like Zillow. Okay. If you're, if you're paying a hundred dollars a lead for Facebook leads, you're doing something wrong, but let's just run with that number. Every single time, if you're spending $500 a month, you're getting thousands and thousands of people seeing your ad impressions they're called. So your ad at the very least, they're seeing your page. They're seeing the, the profile photo. They're seeing the logo. They're seeing your, your name over and over and over in their newsfeed. That's called branding, folks. Branding leads to sales. Branding leads to credibility and top of mind awareness, which leads to sales. So with Facebook ads, you're getting a crap load of branding that happens that does not happen with Zillow ads. And so even if uh, you're paying a crazy amount for those leads, even on Facebook ads, and again, you're doing it wrong if, if they're that expensive, um, there's still so much more value in that branding that you're getting from the Facebook platform, because they can click on that page. They can go to your page and see all of that. Now what happens too, if you really know how to do Facebook ads, like our massive agent society members do, you know how to create custom audiences of people who engage with your posts. So you can actually, you cannot do any of this with, with Zillow. Okay. You're just hoping somebody clicks on it and submits a, a request to see a property. That's literally all you're hoping for with Zillow. With a Facebook ad, if they click on it, even even if they don't ever fill out the lead form to become a lead, if they like it, love it, wow it, ha ha it, you know, all that stuff, if they react to the post or they comment on it or they share it, or if it's a video that they watch, they can now be put in a custom audience, okay, through your Facebook pixel, so you can retarget ads to just those people. So just by running the ad, even if you get no direct leads that lead to closings from that $500 a month, you can, you're now creating a custom audience of those who did engage with the post. So they're, they're basically waving their hand saying, Hey, over here, I'm interested in what you've got. I'm interested in what you're offering here. Just by the fact that they engaged with the post, they're qualifying themselves. 
All of those people go into a custom audience if you've set it up correctly. Now you can run ads to just those people. Do you think you're going to convert a hell of a lot more of those than the random cold audience? Of course. But it just takes a little extra work. It takes a little extra work and expertise to do that. And knowledge, of course. Like you've got to know how to do it. You have to know how to do it the right way. You have to be patient. And you have to um, set up the system. It's not a hard thing. The proof of that is I did it. I am doing it. And our Massive Agent Society members are doing it in, in their markets. Okay, it's, it's something you can learn to do too for a hell of a lot less than what you're paying Zillow. So I do think, like, it's a long answer. I really dove in on, on all the context there because I think it's a great question. Why are agents funding their competition? Why are you doing Zillow? But um, I think that that context is important for you to understand. If you're thinking about doing some Zillow ad spend, think again. Like, just... <laughs> Learn how to do Facebook ads, do it well. You're going to get so much more for your money and the, you know, the retargeting, the custom audiences, all that, if you implement that, you're going to crush it over time. It, it's one of those things that compounds over time. With Zillow, you get none of that. You're hoping that your name sticks out on the ad, on the listing, and that, the, and that they click on it and say, I want to see this property. So there you go. Hope that answers your question, Emmett. And I'm sure it answers a lot of other people's questions too. So, uh, you know, I'm a huge Facebook ads guy and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that if you want to learn how to do that in a way where we give you the ads to run and then teach you how to tweak them and make them better and systemize it and follow up with them and all of that and be the only one in your market doing it massiveagentsociety.com. Okay. That's our program. One agent per market, massiveagentsociety.com. And we'll show you how to do that for a hell of a lot less than, than what you're paying Zillow. All right. So Christian Harris from Seattle, Washington, he's the co-host of the rethink real estate podcast. I was just, uh, we recorded an episode yesterday for, for that show. I'm super excited for that and honored. He'd ask, uh, Christian Harris in Seattle says, what is your secret or process for being so consistent with your podcast episodes and content in general? <laughs> You'd be surprised how inconsistent I am with posting, Christian. Um, I'm super consistent with the podcast, but even about I'm consistent with when it's released. It always shows up Thursday morning. I'm inconsistent with when I record it, when I edit it, when I get the show notes done, when I get the, the WordPress blog post done, when I get the graphics done, when I get all that stuff done. And sometimes I don't even do one of those little things because I'm just like behind the scenes. I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, trying my best, trying my best. So you, you guys see the end result. You don't see all the stuff that goes into it. All right. Um, but again, I just make it a priority and I decided that this is happening every freaking week, no matter what. Now the posts that, that go with that, I do my best. I try to be as consistent as possible, but I don't like to schedule posts out. I like to come up with an idea, like an idea will come to me and I'll, put it together and post it or schedule it to post later that day or something like that. That's how I do it. There's certain posts that I do to promote the show that I do consistently. And I've now hired a virtual assistant to help with some of that stuff, take some of the, the work off my plate and, and make it more consistent so I can focus on other things. So hiring someone who can do those, some of those, those tasks, um, I'm not saying hire somebody to write your descriptions for you. I'm not saying hire somebody to record your podcast episode for you. That has to be you. That has to be you. But all the mechanical things like taking a WordPress blog post and inserting podcast player and writing a, you know, copy the description that I just wrote, um, you know, adding social media links, like adding the guest bio that could be done by somebody else. I just give them, I write the description, I write the title, I'm talking about podcast episodes. I write the title, description, summary, tags, everything that I want for the podcast episode. And then they take that and turn it into a blog post and some graphics and stuff. Um, so it's the mechanical things I outsource. I highly recommend you guys do that with a virtual assistant or somebody that'll do it for I me. Mean, ideally, you find someone who is in the industry or has been so that they understand um, they understand what you're doing. So yeah, I outsource some stuff, Christian, but again, I just made a decision to make this stuff top priority and then I do the best I can. That's it. 
That's it. It's as simple as that. It's not easy, but it is simple. All right. M- uh, Michael Worthington Adams in Richmond, Virginia. Of all the things you do, what do you find is most effective to leverage yourself and your time? I believe that this this podcast is the most powerful thing I've ever done for growing my brand in the way I want to grow it. I This podcast has been the most effective thing I've ever done to to grow my audience. And I wish I would have started it sooner. Like many things we do in life, you know, once we finally make a decision and start, when we make a decision about doing something, we then forget about all the reasons why we told ourselves we shouldn't. Once you decide and start moving forward on that thing, like maybe it's switching brokerages. When I switched to eXp Realty, I waited about another year after I first saw it. I loved it when I first saw it if I'm being honest, but I kept telling myself stories of why I couldn't do it now. So I waited a year. Once I finally decided to switch, I was like, God damn it. All those things that I, all those stories I told myself of reasons why I shouldn't are dumb or they're just not that important or they're just not accurate. And I'm like, I should have started sooner. Same thing with the podcast. I wish I would have started sooner, but you start when you start. I mean, the best time to plant a tree is today and 30 years ago. Same thing with starting a podcast or starting a video show or uh, creating a LinkedIn profile, uh, creating a, a TikTok profile, whatever the hell it is, you've just got to do it. But um, for me, it's been the podcast. Before that, um, s- starting a website with Easy Agent Pro, okay, my Search Salt Lake website, and and starting to blog and do content for my local market. And that was the most effective. Once I realized they don't want to hear about real estate, they want to hear about what's going on in the community. Those, those top 10 lists of 10 best coffee shops, 10 best parks and playgrounds, 10 best sushi restaurants, 10 best, whatever. Those are evergreen. People share those for years. And I I learned pretty quickly that, that that really helps grow my, my brand locally and got me a lot more real estate business. So podcasting, there's nothing more powerful. But when I started blogging three and a half years ago with my website at Easy Agent Pro, proud sponsor of the show. Thank you guys. Um, that was super powerful as well because it was that was my starting point. So would if, if that's not your starting point, would that be the most effective thing for you? I don't know. Maybe. There's so many variables to this stuff, guys. What's effective for me may not be for you because you're different. You have different strengths and weaknesses than I do. You have different likes and dislikes. Um, you know, if somebody, if somebody, let's see, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. You may hate being on video and it makes you shake and you're nervous and you just, you hate everything about it. Just because I might say Instagram stories are the most effective thing doesn't mean you personally should do that. You know what I mean? But, but so personally me, the podcast has been the best. And then starting down the road of content marketing, specifically with a website through Easy Agent Pro and blogging is what was most effective for me. So I do believe podcasting is probably most effective for most people if you do a good job, if you are putting out stuff people want to hear, if you realize that creating the content is just one part, then you have to promote it to get people to know about it, right? Just by having a podcast doesn't mean shit. If nobody knows your podcast exists, whatever your podcast is about is irrelevant because no one's heard it, right? Like you just have to be somewhat decent and then make a bunch of people know it exists and get them to listen and some will and some won't. There you go. Uh, Oh, I love this. Here's a coffee question. Jana Oman from Salt Lake City. Um, friend of mine here in Salt Lake, we've actually had coffee together, which is awesome. She asks dark roast or light roast. Uh, this is probably the best question of, of this whole list, Jenna. Um, I like medium roast. Actually, I like the light because it's more caffeinated, but I like the flavor of medium. It's the best of both worlds. And there you go. I like, I like black coffee, medium. Sometimes I'll put some superfood creamer in there from, um, layered, layered superfoods. If you guys watch watch my Instagram stories, you've seen it. I love the superfood creamer I put in my morning coffee. It's not super creamy or anything. It's just really freaking good. Um, yeah, there you go. I love it. And and I am always accepting um, trials of coffee. So if you're like, oh, you've got to try this local coffee. I have 
Here's what I should do. I should do a contest on this show. Or here's here's what I'm going to tell you anyways. Um, the front will be the 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 story that I tell you guys is I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the best coffee in America, um, and so I need you to send me the best coffee you have locally, and I will taste test it, and then we'll do a contest on the show. It's really just a ruse for me to get you to send me coffee. So let's do that. Let's do that. Um, yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. It, uh, if you want to send in the local coffee, just DM me and I'll give you my address. How about that? And <laughs> woo, totally full transparency, guys. Full transparency. If you want to send me coffee, if you're proud of your local coffee and you want me to try it, I would love to try it. Absolutely. So I will. I will let you send it over, and I will. My wife and I will drink the shit out of it. Absolutely. And we'll give you a shout out too. Okay. Um, last question before we wrap it up here, when, or before we get to the, uh, rapid fire questions, when w- <laughs> Michael Duran from Las Vegas, he's one of our massive agent society members, um, in Vegas, he, when I say one of, he is the massive agent society member for Vegas because you know, you're claiming a whole market. He asked, when will you change the name of your Alexa device so that it doesn't come on during your podcasts? Hashtag 99 false alarms. That's a good question. I assume you mean 99 because up until today there was 99 episodes. Great question. Um, I just started unplugging Alexa because if you've been listening to the show for a minute, you know whenever I mentioned our Massive Agent Minute flash briefing or Alexa, that Alexa would be on, you know, three and a half feet away from me and she'd ding and, you know, start doing her thing. And I would always forget to unplug her before the show. I've just started remembering. So whenever I'm recording, I unplug Alexa and no issue. So I don't need to change her name or her uh, invocation name or anything like that because that would confuse me. I've just gotten good at remembering to unplug it. Doesn't mean that I'll that I won't have it plugged in for like episode 104 or something cuz you know. Just because you forget something doesn't mean you or just because you remember something doesn't mean you can't forget it. So, good question. But I I love I love Alexa. I love flash briefings. I think that here's what's interesting. So I was having a meeting in Dallas couple days ago when I went down to Dallas, if you were watching my Instagram stories, I was down in Dallas. We were having, uh, had a meeting and we were talking about voice marketing podcasts and flash briefings. And I admitted that, you know, it was kind of surprising that flash briefings haven't caught on, uh, the way podcasts have flash briefings have kind of been, uh, stagnant a little bit as far as adoption within our industry. Okay. Um, but the infrastructure is there, like, uh, Everybody has Alexa devices and, you know, millions and millions and millions more are going to be sold on Black Friday and then for Christmas. And I mean, last year, the Alexa app was the the number one app on the app store the day after Christmas. Uh, It's because everyone was getting Echo devices. The same is going to happen this year. So like everyone has Alexa devices and now people have multiple. Once they know that flash briefings are a thing and they can actually subscribe to multiple flash briefings and then listen each day to, to new stuff, they're going to do it. So, guys, this is why I'm still so bullish on doing a flash briefing um, is that everyone has these devices already. Like uh, all it takes is for, for Amazon to start marketing flash briefings so that it becomes uh, – re- so that consumers really start to become aware of them and you already have a flash briefing and you're experienced and you've built up a, an audience and you have reviews and all that stuff, you're going to be one of the first and you're going to benefit from that rush of new people listening. That will happen at some point. I don't know when. It's happened slower than I thought. But I'm still super bullish on Alexa flash briefings. But there's still nothing better than podcasting, in my humble opinion. Guys, great questions. Thank you so much. I appreciate you sending those in and I appreciate you listening to the show. It's still kind of surreal to me that that I'm recording episode 100. And in that spirit, um, if, you, if you've been listening to a few episodes, especially interview episodes, you know that I, I end the interview with people, with our guests, with a series of rapid fire questions. I thought it'd be kind of fun to answer them myself today so you can kind of get a better idea of where I fall uh, or where I come in on these things. So let's do rapid fire with myself, Facebook or Instagram, Facebook. It's just too big and powerful. And you can do so many things with Facebook, even though I love Instagram, I'm going to pick Facebook, Instagram or LinkedIn. I feel like I should say LinkedIn. I'm going to say Instagram 
because personally I like Instagram more and I'm, I've been having some success with it. Um, even though I've been a little more inconsistent as of late with the frequency of feed posts, I've been trying to do as many stories as possible, just kind of documenting my day and you know all that stuff. Uh, I'm going to go with Instagram, even though I feel like I should have said LinkedIn because I feel like everyone needs to be utilizing LinkedIn. But personally, Instagram, book or podcast, podcast. Um, I like audiobooks. I don't. As much as I like the thought of reading a physical book, I'm a slow reader. I'd much rather turn it on 1.5 or 1.75 speed on Audible and consume it that way while I'm doing something else. I can be a hell of a lot more productive. So that's how I chose. That's why I choose to do it. Um, iPhone or Android? Stupid freaking question. iPhone, Alexa or Google Home? Alexa because Google's evil and I don't like them. Burgers or pizza? Uh, burgers. Mm-hmm. And I tried a Whataburger for the first time. And again, if you watch my Instagram stories over the last the last few days, I was in Dallas. So in Texas, they have Whataburger. In Utah, we do not, but we do have In-N-Out Burger. So I had very, very high expectations of Whataburger. I kept hearing it's so much better than In-N-Out. It's so much better than Shake Shack or whatever. It's just a great burger. And Texans definitely have pride in their Whataburger. I think it was probably built up a little bit too much in my mind. It, really good. And I was really surprised at how freaking big the patties are. I got a double and that was a bad idea. It was just so big. I, uh, next time, definitely a single, but it was, it was a, I thought Whataburger was very good. It just wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. And I still think I like in and out better, mainly because of the quality of the food at in and out. Like they don't have a bunch of crap in the food, uh, like, you know, chemicals and, you know, GMOs, stuff like that. Um, but I'm a burger guy. I love burgers. I take a burger over a pizza pretty much any day, New York or LA, New York all day long. I kind of like LA, I guess. I love San Diego. Love San Diego. So if it was a choice between New York or San Diego, I'd probably still say New York. I've just, I've been to San Diego a dozen or, or more times. I've only been to New York three times. Yeah, three times. And I'm obsessed with New York. So New York for me. Um, NHL or NBA, not a huge professional sports fan, but I'll say NBA, specifically the Utah Jazz. I... I have not been an NBA fan since I was a kid, like grade school kid. But the Utah Jazz right now, there's something about the team that really excites me. It gets me interested again. And so I follow the Utah Jazz and as a result, learn a little bit about the NBA and what's going on. But um, NBA, uh, NBA or N NFL, NBA. I do not like the NFL anymore. It just, it bores me. It annoys me. All of just the the extracurricular bullshit, like the whole kneeling thing is just exhausting. Um, just all the politics and stuff and all the, just all the, the nastiness of like domestic abuse of the players and or players abusing their, their girlfriends and partners and stuff. Like it just, it's exhausting and it made it not enjoyable anymore. And, and so I love college football, love college football. I just, I can't stand the NFL anymore. I just can't, that might change. But I just, um, I've never been to an NFL game, actually, now that I think of it. So I need to go to an NFL game. That, that might change it for me a little bit. Um, but there we go. Baseball or football? Football. I never really played baseball growing up. So, um, you know, I, I get it. It just doesn't excite me. But football, football is my sport for sure, even though, admittedly, I don't watch much sports at all. Even though I say all these things that I love this, I love that. I just don't watch much sports at all. I'm just too busy doing things. And when I'm not doing things, I'm hanging out with my family. So I rarely watch sports anymore. It is what it is. Mountains or beach? Um, ba, ba, ba. I'm going to say beach because I am spoiled by having some of the best mountains on the planet right here within a 20-minute drive of my house in Salt Lake City. I have the mountains on lock. I can go hiking in the middle of a national forest in 20 minutes if I want. I can go rock climbing. I can go snowboarding. And uh, I can take the kids to throw rocks in the rivers, all that stuff. Um, love the mountains. Because I don't have a beach readily accessible, I'm going to say beach because it's my preferred destination since I have such great mountains here. Um, are we in a real estate bubble or no bubble? I do not feel like we're in a real estate bubble at all um, because – well, for many reasons. I'm not even going to, going to elaborate on that. If you've heard our previous guests elaborate on that, they had great context. Um, 
I could go off for, for 10 minutes about that. But no, we do not have the bad loans that we had in, in 2007, 2008. Okay? We don't. Um, if prices go down, it will be like if there's a real estate recession, correction, whatever, which there will be, it will be for natural reasons or geopolitical reasons that one thing affects this, affects that, which then affects housing. Like if people start losing jobs in a certain area that's like highly um, like tech, San Francisco, right? San Jose, if the tech industry takes a big hit for whatever reason, that's going to affect those real estate markets. But nationally, I do not see a bubble at all. Podcast or vlog, podcast, uh, I like multitasking like when I'm consuming content. So I prefer podcast to vlog. But if I want to learn something, vlogging, watching a vlog, watching a YouTube video is great. Um, if it's, if it's something visual, but if not podcast all day long, YouTube or Facebook live, Facebook live. Yeah. Facebook live. Um, I love YouTube because it's searchable, but, um, Facebook live is just so easy. It's such a low barrier to entry to, to, to do it. And I, I love Facebook live. So I, I do, um, the industry connected show every Friday on Facebook live and I need to, I need to get it up on YouTube live as well. So that's coming soon. Um, I'm just a big Facebook platform fan. Uber or Lyft. I used to think Uber, but I'm a Lyft guy now. Uh, it seems to be a little bit cheaper. And because I am a Delta um, silver medallion guy, I I get Sky Miles. I get Delta Sky Miles whenever I use Lyft, especially um, you know to and from the airport. So I use Lyft. It's just... Yeah, it's not that I don't like Uber. I just check Lyft first, and it seems to be a little cheaper. So I like Lyft. And then Gary V or Grant Cardone, Gary V, all day long. I, even though I respect, uh, I, I respect, uh, it's kind of hard. I respect, uh, respect Grant Cardone. Woo. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, his 10X book, I think has some great stuff in it. Some Some great shit within 10 X from Grant Cardone. I just don't like him. I don't like his personality. I don't like certain things about like who he attracts, the type of people he attracts. And, and so I definitely am a hashtag team Gary V guy for sure. And then uh, one app recommendation. Okay. Um, one app recommendation that I'm using, I'm going to have to scroll here. I was not prepared for my own question, believe it or not. Um, the industry syndicate app. Okay. Yeah. The industry syndicate app on app store or Google play. I actually am using it for social reasons. So even though, yes, I'm a co-founder of the network and it's a great place to discover new podcasts, new flash briefings, new social media shows and converse with the hosts of them and meet other people within the community. I'm having a lot of fun just like friending people that, uh, that, for example, like somebody listens to the Mortgage Marketing Expert podcast because of Phil Treadwell and he does a great job, then uh, they download the Industry Syndicate app. They they naturally discover my show and start listening and friend me, and now they're um, part of my community. I love that, and so I'm really having a lot of fun messaging people one on one and um, just growing the community within the Industry Syndicate app. It's great for that, and so. Uh, all right, I'll give you an, I'll give you another one besides the industry syndicate app. Wise, W Y Z E. Um, those little Wise cameras you can get them on Amazon for less than thirty bucks. We have one in my daughter's room. Instead of a baby monitor, we have the Wise camera. We have a few others around the house, and so Wise is easy to just click on it. And be like, mm, I want to see what's going on with with this camera. You can do you know you can record. You can get notifications. There's two way audio, all that stuff. But I, I, yeah, the Wise app, kind of some smart home security type stuff. And so there you go. All right, guys. Um, I, I'm, I'm humbled that we just wrapped up episode 100. I'm humbled that you are still listening. I hope that you learned something today that, that you find helpful. Um, if nothing more, I just want to be a <sighs> – the fact that I'm able to put out so much stuff and, and be productive and, and have a certain level of success, I want to be proof to you in and of itself that you can do it too. I don't think I'm that special. I think I have an above average work ethic and determination, but I don't think I'm that special. I'm not like, 
I'm smart, you know, I'm smart, but there's a lot of smart people. I don't, I just don't think I'm that special. And it's not that I'm not giving myself credit. It's just, I think I'm self-aware enough to know that action and determination and consistency trumps skill in a lot of ways, um, or it can, you know, over time. So just the fact that I've done a hundred episodes and that I've, I've been able to have some success, just let that, just let that show you, you can do it too. I want nothing more for you than to you, than for you to just kill it, doing something you enjoy doing. And I want you to have financial independence and a safety net and income that, that, that occurs over and over and over that you don't have to keep working for. I want you to start setting up systems so that you turn your job into a business. I want you to take advantage of opportunities that you can take advantage of. You just have to have an open mind. You have to take a little bit of a leap and look at people who have taken the leap before you and realize, hmm, they're not going to lead me wrong. It's working out for them. Why can't it work out for me? Take the leap. Do it. Guys, action trumps everything. And you can choose what you want your life and your career to look like. No, nobody, literally no one but you decides that. You decide what it looks like, but your actions determine what it actually, what actually happens. So if you're saying you want this certain thing, but you're not doing the activities to get you there, or you're not in the right vehicle to get there, you're not going to get there. So guys, go get it. Episode 100. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate the shit out of you. And I'd be remiss if I didn't at least ask for some sort of reciprocation from any of you that have received value from this episode. If you have not left a review on iTunes please, or Apple Podcasts, please do. It helps us out tremendously. It costs you nothing. All it costs you is maybe 15 to 30 seconds of your time. Just go to massiveagentpodcast.com slash review or in whatever podcast app you're, you're listening to this, just go to find scroll down and find where you can review. Go look at the reviews, leave a review. It helps us out a lot. Thank you so much. And go out there, go take action, go make it happen. Again, you determine what your life and your career looks like. Make sure you're, you're moving in the right direction. Thanks guys. Take care.